Bob Ross here, which is, a, which is another great video of math. Let's enjoy. Alright, this is 2.4 trends, interpolation, and extrapolation. So basically yesterday uh, we talked about scatter plots and we could take data from a list. We had our independent variable and our dependent variable and we decided if there was some correlation, positive, negative, or no correlation. We'll talk more about that at the end of today as well. Um, but now we're going to be gaining insight from data, from scatter plots, etc. Uh, and two words that go along with that, three <laughs> words I guess, is trends, interpolation, and extrapolation. So, at first, a couple notes. At the top, you have a bit of space for notes there, and two little graphs there. It says, graphs can help you recognize, graphs can help you recognize trends in a set of data. We figured that out yesterday, and that statement is pretty obvious. If you just have a list of numbers, it's pretty hard to make sense of it all, but as soon as you put it into a graph, now all of a sudden there's a visual, there's a picture you can look at, you can see trends, is it rising up, is it declining, all of those sorts of things. If you find a trend, if you find a trend, you can use it to predict values of each variable. Okay, let's see what this looks like. We're going to have, uh, a, in your first picture there, underneath that first bar uh, graph that we're going to do, we're going to draw a picture of, maybe I'll just do my mine as well like this. In the first one we're looking at an upward trend. Another way of saying that is positive correlation. And in the second image there, we're going to be, you guessed it, looking at downward trend, which is also called negative correlation. Correlation is basically a question of do these things relate to each other? Is the one variable dependent on the other variable? So the upward trend, I'm just putting in random dots to give an example of what upward trend would look like. It would look something like that. Okay? Yep, go ahead and do your own data showing an upward trend. Doesn't have to look just like mine, but it should be going as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable increases. Okay, this is positive correlation that vertical axis, the data, the numbers get bigger and bigger as the horizontal axis gets bigger and bigger. Uh, what do you think negative correlation is going to look like? Yeah. Going the other way. Okay. So here, we're starting up high with our dependent variable and we're training down. Mr. B, is independent the horizontal axis? We almost always have independent on the horizontal axis. Yep. Okay, so your x axis is independent and your y axis depends on that. So, for instance, if we were, again, comparing age and height, we would expect it to look like this. That would be a positive correlation. As you get older, you get taller. Can you think of any example of negative correlation? as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable decreases. The farther you drive, like the less gas? The older ah, the car is, the less Good, so you, you can have distance and fuel. 
you don't have to write those. It's just one example that works uh, for negative correlation. Okay? You can come up with lots more. Uh, the older you get, you kind of shrink. Sure. Maybe at the mm -hmm. tail end of your life, you, this could be an age height as well. Yeah, it could be something like uh, hours of daylight and moisture in the air. Right? The higher the hours of daylight, the less moisture in the air. But then it would go back up. Like at night, then would there be sunlight? Yeah. yeah. So once you have some data, you've graphed it, you can determine whether or not it has positive correlation or negative correlation, and you're aware of that, then you can start to interpret it. And there's two words that we use in order to interpret things, and it has to do with uh, looking for estimates inside data that you already have, or looking for estimates outside of data that's available to you. The first word is interpolate. Where do you read it? Still, yeah, still at that top. This is when we estimate a value between two measurements when we estimate a value between two measurements in a set of data so in our example we talked about age, and age versus height if you had this data all plugged in and you said, okay, uh, next year I'm going to turn 14. That's probably not a good example because you know, there's better ways to predict it. But uh, let's say, okay, my neighbor down the street is 16. How tall is he? Well, I could look at this and say, there's an estimate that, you know, if he's 16, he's probably, you know, right around here in life. He's probably about this tall, somewhere in here. You could estimate his height based on the data that you have. That's interpolate, okay? You're estimating a value. It's inside the data that you already have. Then we have extrapolate. Extrapolation is a little bit more involved, a little bit more difficult, but it's not extract, extrap, extrapolate. Uh, estimate, this is when we estimate the farther down you go. a value beyond the range of a set of data. Now the two examples that we have up here aren't really good ones for extrapolating uh, because age ends, right? You die. But if it were if we compared something like, I don't know, the number of cell phones per household over the over the years since the invention of the cell phone. Well, we'd have data from whenever they came out, 90 whatever, till 2019. We'd have that data, right? But then we could predict something, how many cell phones there are per household in 2030. That would be extrapolating. We don't have that data. We're looking beyond the data. Make sense? We did it with Mr. All right, you have one example to apply the words that we have just uh, taken notes on. Can Jacob, can you read our example for us, please? Uh, the table shows the number of paid admissions to a movie in Canada for a 12-month period ending on March 31. Okay, so it gives you a little uh, definition there. Fiscal year is a 12-month period. Uh, when we talk about a government that's fiscally responsible, it means they, in the course of a year, they don't spend more than we have. Make sense? So if you're fiscally responsible, you are taking care of your finances properly over the course of a year uh, and year to year. So this is, we have information for each year, each 12 month period, starting in 1994 all the way to 2003. And we're gonna plot that data. Now the first thing we wanna do is identify independent and dependent variables. So you have your data there. Your variables are fiscal year and attendance. Which one is not dependent on anything? Fiscal year. 
cool. the year, okay? So maybe let's just put a little independent, or IND, beside fiscal year. And what's the dependent then? Attendance. Attendance is dependent on the year. So which axis are we going to put our fiscal year on? Horizontal. We're going to put that on the horizontal axis. Fiscal year. And that stretches from 1994 to 2003. And we're going to be doing a bar graph. So let's just see if we have enough room to skip skip spaces here. If we went 94, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, nope. Uh, so let's just do 94, 95, and I'm going in the box because I'm going to draw a bar graph. 96, and just keep going until you get to 2003. Good. And what variable will go along our, hor our vertical axis? What's our dependent variable? Attendance. Attendance. And here we also, in brackets, we'll put millions. That's to note that we're counting in millions. So when it says 83.8, that means 83.8 million. So 83,800,000. And our numbers extend from, how do we want to do this? Do we want to start at zero? No. No, let's do a little broken bar. And sure, we'll start at 80. Eighty, and we need to go all the way up to 120. So let's see, we've got 90, 100, 110, 120. We can probably do two per, yeah? Uh, 90. So going up by tens? I'm doing two boxes for every 10, so I'm kind of going up by fives, but I'm only writing every tenth 90. value. 100. On the line. And we're on the line. Yeah, on the line. This is on the line, yeah. Is that every two, or? How did you get that? Mm -hmm. I only got uh, 120. That's what you need in the field. No, it's 125. Oh, yeah. oh, there is. Yep, it'll kind of fit. That's okay. Good. Yeah, okay, so let's start plotting our data. I will, uh, I'll do the first one or two with you, and then I'll let you do the rest on your own. So I'm choosing a different color. In 1994, I'm looking for 83.8, which is close to 85, but not quite. And there's my box. In 95, we're looking for 87.3. Halfway between 85 and 90. Complete the box. In 96, we're looking at 91.3. Positive or negative correlation so far? Positive. Positive correlation, good job. And you can keep on filling out your graph. And once you're done drawing your bar graph, try to analyze the data a little bit on your own. Look for trends. And then try to think about why this trend might exist or why the data may have changed from one year to the next, whether it's going up uh, higher, more attendance, or less attendance. Try to develop reasons what for this. All right, let's analyze this data, ladies and gentlemen. Guys and gals, we were born that decade. hello. Put up your hand if you would like to describe any trends in movie attendance from '94 to 2003. Any trends that you see, Jaden? There's a positive correlation between 1994 and 2000. No. Yeah. 1994 and 1999. No. Yes. 2002. Overall, there's an upward trend, right? Yeah. Overall, there's an upward trend. Positive correlation or upward trend. We're looking for trends, so we may as well use the trend language. Upward trend. Uh, anything else that happens? 
Yeah, we let's just say a drop. Drop in attendance. From O two to O three. That's sufficient. C says Stats Canada did not survey movie attendance for the period from April 2001 to March 2002. That's why we don't have a bar there. That's why we have no data. Estimate the movie attendance during this year. 140. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it's 15. Why? 130. 115. Yeah, probably like low 120s would be reasonable. 123. 123 to 125, something in there. No, it's yeah. 150, 150, 121 uh, would be fine. Is that interpolation or extrapolation? That interpolation. is interpolation. interpolation. Why? How do you know? Because okay. you're estimating by what you see. You're estimating a value that's within the range of given. You're estimating a value within the measurements that you're given, right? So we have data for 94. We have data all the way up to 2003. 2001 falls in that data. Okay, it's not there, but it falls within the range of data that we have. So we can basically just cut the difference here and say, okay, yep, it's about 121, 125. Is, is this interpolation stuff like? Is this lesson going to be on the test or yes. tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, this mm, I don't think this is on tomorrow's quiz. No. Okay, back to it. D. Predict the number of paid admissions to movies in Canada. For the year ending in 2006, interpolation or extrapolation? Extrapolation. Extrapolation. We're estimating something that is outside of the measurements we've been given. Well, go ahead and take a guess. Yeah. Is it going to continue heading down after 2002? Uh, movies. What if you're saying the more and the more internet right. use there is, the less yeah, theater right. visiting there is. Exactly. Yeah, right? Not right Maybe right. there's a so negative sort of correlation in graph we could draw. Yeah. Go ahead and write any guess you'd like, and I will look it, it up after up. this lesson. Don't know. In E, E says the SARS outbreak. Do you guys know what SARS is? No. So SARS was a respiratory uh, issue, uh, illness that like took over Toronto and, and Canada uh, really severely with lots of illness and death in 2003. Anyway, the SARS outbreak in Canada occurred in the spring and summer of 2003. Would you change your prediction for 2005 to 2006 based on this information? Now, it's why might down. this change hands? Why might this change your perspective on the data that we have? Talk to the person beside you, or behind you, directly behind or in front of you. Wow, they just the other Behind you. Okay, I think it goes down. No, it goes up. No, because it's sick. Don't talk to us. It's in a public It's in a public Okay, somebody share uh, a reflection on E. Would the knowledge of SARS outbreak in 2003 change your prediction about 2006? No. You said that the movie attendance Uh, the SARS outbreak was contained and is dealt with and is done. It's gone. Oh. Long gone Boom. in 2003. Boom! Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Me and Jake, because people are like, yes, it's over, let's go. So, so we're saying there might be fear driven, keeping people away from the theater. Mm, but people may celebrate the like <laughs> getting well, over SARS. That that I think the more important thing to note That's is we, ha we said that there started to be a downward trend from 02 to 03. And we assumed that downward trend would probably continue due to the internet. But what really caused that downward trend? Sickness, Sickness in 2003. <laughs> so this might just be an outlier. This might just be a one step drop, and it might go right back up in 2004. Yeah. Okay? So it, it makes you double guess this downward trend. We know what, what caused this. It, this might not be a trend at all, it might just be a one year drop. We need more data to figure that out for sure. I'll double check what really happened uh, with with oh, movie watching. Data? Uh, yeah, and your task is to take on practice problems from page three sixty five, numbers one through six. Check how many people attended.